Here's my car, and we're here for a very good reason. One of my speakers has died. Now, I've already previously unlocked it because the central locking remote doesn't work anymore. Nor does this speaker. And the glove box is to be fixed at a later date. Now we always keep our cars locked because we wouldn't want anyone stealing our empty printer boxes, 30 year old oscilloscopes, and fuck that bus because it wakes me up every morning. Or pension motherboards that sit in a precarious place to slice your head off in an accident. So, I've never actually removed a car door before, the plastic panel to get to the speaker, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go about it. So, like anything I've never done before, Let's get on with it. Yeah, the internal installations in this car are a bit shit. Especially the glove box. It's not even big enough for all the shit I keep in there. Then to close it is kind of, yeah. <laughs> the glove box needs modification. Radio's good. Speaker connections aren't. It does seem to be a loose connection because when I went round the corner that speaker temporarily came back online. And God help me if any of these speakers ever break. I do not have a clue how you get to that because I don't see any way in through that side. Anyway, we have our screwdriver kit and we have a multimeter. So we got all the tools we need. Let's figure out how to get this door thing off. This is where a live thing would be really useful. Volkswagen Fox. Excellent car. Crap internal fittings. I'm at the point where the door sort of flaps in the breeze and goes like, well, a sail. And you could certainly do like that. But we have things like this little mechanism, this. I think it's time to consult Google. Bit of a defeatist attitude, but I don't want to risk damaging the door. Because that probably costs money. And we've already had the suspension sorted. It all turned up literally nothing, which is so typical, so I've got to figure this out myself. Actually, do good job of an engineer. And guess what? Look! The weather has become perfect for this sort of thing. Fucking England. Right. It looks like from one, I'll pull it, pull it off and then sort of lift it up. But that's a completely different car. Oh well, it's a rough guide to follow. Let's figure out what the rest of the clips are. I think the door panel turned out to be easier than expected. The only awkward bit is this, so be careful, but it is cable operated so it won't just like snap. Then of course there's the electric window and there's different systems for that, but you've basically got a few screws there. So if we go on here, you've got a screw under here, a screw there, a screw there, Another two there with one hidden under here and one here. Unscroll them and the door. There's clips around it, two main ones there, this side and this side, and a few like up here that you just gently pull off. You can see the points where they went in. Not there. Duh, duh, duh. So they came off actually relatively well. Yeah, good, excellent. And then I'll probably do a little thing showing how to take that on and off. And it connects your standard sort of connector affair. Push, tab, pull. And that gets out from the electric mechanism. Don't forget to lift it gently off this because this is actually a metal mechanism. You don't want to damage that in any way. But look, it's all plasticky. Supposedly for waterproofing, but... You are kidding me. They've riveted the speakers in. So if you want to replace these, have fun. Right. Uh... Let's fire up the radio and do some preliminary tests and see exactly what is causing the loose connection. Here's a snag. Can you see what it is? The motherfuckers at the factory riveted it in instead of screwing it in so it could be replaced on the occasions where it dies. Bastards. And guess where the problem is? It's a loose connection in the speaker. However, you get voltage through here because I just tested it with my mouth, you need it. It's quite fun watching music and this thing completely freak itself out not knowing what to do. So, we now know the problem. How do we fix it? I don't really want to break past this uh, very pathetic waterproofing which is 
barely really holding anymore. <laughs> I suppose it is seven years old, so the sticky is going to go a bit crap. But hey, hmm. how can I go about this? Unless there's some sort of secret, super duper way to remove the speaker. I don't know. It looks pretty well attached. <sighs> right, I've swapped to some non copyrighted stuff that I use for my channel. Where's the CD I have? That is a completely buggered speaker. It needs replacing. I need a de-riveter. Hmm. I'm not really sure exactly what to do. There is, however, a Volkswagen garage near here, so I might actually drive up and speak to them about it. Although it's not my one, it is one that's somewhere up in the industrial state. But yeah, that sounds pretty terrible, doesn't it? This speaker needs photonic inductioning. <laughs> Send it to him and he can finish it off. I'm really not sure what to do about the riveting though. I don't deal in rivets. Knocking the volume up seems to have temporarily fixed it. However... A quick fix like that doesn't last. Now it's attempting to actually get it to repeat the failure. Oh well, I'm still going to speak to the garage about new speakers. Annoyingly, this will be a multiple part video going over this project. But, how we're going to approach this, they're riveted from the back, because me and my mate sort of pulled off this stuff and had a look. That's why it's all stuck on more crappier than it was. And basically, this is going to have to be one I go home for. I'm going to dremel off the rivets, catch them so they don't rattle around in here for 5,000 billion years, aka the life of the car. Although at this rate, it'll probably be a year. <laughs> don't die on me. I don't have the money for another one. But yeah, dremel these off. Measure this thing up to get the sort of dimensions, because you don't want to get one that's too big to fit in. The speakers seem to be about 20 quid, so you don't want to be wasting 20 quid. And we can mount the new one in, bolt it in with bolts, not rivets, absolute motherfuckers who put in rivets, really piss me off that has. And then all shall be good. And of course we've got to make sure we have some sort of matching connector or connector that comes with it because we can easily lop this off and stick in another one. I've done a few connector conversions in the past, usually actually recycling connectors, pulling them off the computer cables. Metallically with pliers and screwdrivers and putting them on new ones, but that all works. Multimeter completely freaks out when you pump music into it, but yeah, that's how we're going to approach it. <coughs> so, let's show you how to put the door back together. I'm not going to screw it in, but I'm going to find where would be a safe place for the keys. That's a good question. I might have to screw it in because it's a safe place for the keys <laughs> and the screws. Excellent, that's roughly in view, so you can see the cable harness here, so that goes just plugs straight back into the thing, preferably in a method you can see it. We're not too worried about the condition of the speaker of damaging it a bit because it's broken. Then this thing, which is the door thing, you lift that up, feeds through there, clips on, then you just feed it through. Like that. Ta -da! Genius. And you just lift it on. See the locky uh, knob thing. Dildo vibratory looky thing. Pop it on like that. And then some percussive maintenance <laughs> to get it to fit back in place. Like this. Nope, that didn't work. Oh, almost. There we go. Some of these are a bit on the awkward side. But yeah. 
second thing I did forget to tell you is the top four are not self-tapping, they are actual proper inserts, metal inserts, whereas the bottom ones are self-tapping into like plastic rivet things at the bottom. Just a good thing to note so you don't get mixed up. Top, proper screws, bottom, crappy cheap screw screws.